Welcome to episode 243 of 10 Minute Record Reviews, the Christmas Eve 2021 edition and also the special Omicron <coughs> edition of 10 Minute Record Reviews. And this time I'm going to talk about this fantastic album by the Brazilian artist Lo Borges, simply entitled Lo Borges. It's his first solo record as a leader. This is not an original pressing from 1972. Uh, those actually go for about 350 US. My best guess is this is a late 80s uh, Brazilian uh, repress. Um, so this record was made in a hurry by Lo Borges. He, of course, is the co-creator of the very, very famous Brazilian record Clube da Esquina, along with Milton Nascimento. Both this record and Clube da Esquina defy categorization. They aren't folk, pop, or rock. They aren't jazz, they aren't tropicalia, they're certainly not bossa nova. Instead, they're both dreamlike collections of songs from the interior mental space of some very sensitive young artists living under a repressive dictatorship at the time in Brazil. Lo Borges was born in the Santa Teresa neighborhood in Belo Horizonte in Brazil in 1952. When Lo was 10, his family moved within Belo Horizonte down to Edificio Levi, Unremarkable, except for the fact that there he meets two people who become his lifelong collaborators, Beto Geddes and Milton Nascimento. His first musical infatuation was the bossa nova in the early 1960s, and he learns to play bossa nova guitar, which is actually quite complicated and a great grounding for what would come later. Then, of course, 1964, Beatlemania hits, and he and his friends are just besotted with the Beatles, and one of my favorite things that ever happened, they form a band called The Beavers, which is a Beatles tribute band, along with his brother and Beto Geddes and his friend Marcio Aquino. They had some success playing locally, but eventually the family moves back to the Santa Teresa neighborhood. And that's where things really start to kick off musically. There, Lo, his brothers and his friends began to hang out in this one corner, the corner of Divinopolis and Paraisopolis streets, which became known as the Corner Club, because the joke was they couldn't afford to go to regular clubs, this was their club, and the name stuck. At this stage, around 15 or 16, Lo was composing music already, somewhat hesitantly, but his older friend, Milton Nascimento, who already had a bit of a musical career going in Brazil at the time, could see how talented Lo was and encouraged him. He entered some of these songs in a student song festival. They were quite well received, and Milton began to record some of his songs in his records, so he's starting to get a bit of profile. A big thing happens when he's 18, and Milton asks him to come to Rio with him to record an album, the one which would end up being Clube da Esquina. Now, there were a lot of hurdles that had to be overcome here, one of which was that Milton had to convince his record label, Odeon, that he should record a record basically with an unknown guy. He did that. The second hurdle was, of course, Lowe's family, because he's only 18, this is a dictatorship, shit's happening, people are disappearing. He's a hippie, he's not exactly the kind of clean-cut kid that the soldiers and the police officers would basically turn a blind eye to, so there's some risks there. Lowe was also concerned that he wouldn't really fit in musically. He knew that Milton was into jazz, into samba, into all kinds of different sorts of music. He was a rock and roll nut. He was a Beatles fan. And so as a condition, he said, Milton, can I bring my friend Beto Geddes, who had been in The Beavers, with him? And if this doesn't work out, at least we can play Beatles music. And Milton said, sure. The final hurdle, of course, was the fact that he had to do military service, being 18. And what happens is he gets drafted, he shows up, and the captain of his troop says, I understand there's a musician in our troop. And Lo puts up his hand. Guy comes over and says, we don't want your kind in here. We don't want communists. We don't want leftists. Out you go. So his military service was relatively short. Milton finds them this great house on the beach. And these hippie kids had it pretty good in the 60s. I'm just saying. And that became their headquarters and their studio for some of the great music, which was to follow. I won't dwell on the first record which came out, Clube de Esquina, because I've already reviewed it. But when it came out in 1972, Lowe was 19, and it was a massive success. It's basically the Sgt. Peppers of Brazil. And Odeon, the record label, liked Lowe's work so much on that record that they invited him to record his own solo record as soon as he possibly could. This record is produced by Milton Miranda, and it's recorded shortly after the production of Clube de Esquina in the Brazilian winter of 1972. It was made in a hurry because the record label wanted this record to get out there while Clube de Esquina was still fresh in the public mind. As a consequence, Lowe was under a lot of pressure at a very young age. He had to compose songs in the morning, he had to write lyrics in the afternoon, he had to record songs at night, there was a fair amount of stimulant use and abuse to basically make this happen. At the end, he wasn't actually that satisfied with the results. It was simply entitled Low Borges, but due to the fairly righteous pair of Adidas tennis shoes on the front cover, are you watching Run DMC? It became known as the Disco de Tennis, or the tennis record. Shoes are actually symbolic because Lowe wanted to convey his wish to basically 
Get the Hell Out of Town, as soon as he'd finished making these two records. There are 13 musicians on this record, but only three who appear on all or nearly all of the tracks. Lobord just sings, he plays acoustic guitar, he plays electric guitar, he plays the Portuguese guitar, more on that later, and the piano. Beto Guedes plays the guitar, the Portuguese guitar, the electric piano, drums, bass, organ, and percussion. Toninho Horta plays bass, organ, guitar, piano, Portuguese guitar, percussion, and harpsichord. Pretty impressive. Now, regarding this Portuguese guitar, this is a medieval instrument. It's known in Portuguese as the guitarra, and because of this, because it actually predates the Spanish guitar, what we would consider today to be the classic acoustic guitar, in Portuguese, the classical guitar or the acoustic guitar is actually known as the violão because the word guitar was actually taken from what I'm calling here the Portuguese guitar. Lowe wasn't actually that pleased with the results, and there had been a lot of pressure on him, as I mentioned, there had been a lot of drug use, just a lot for a young guy to deal with, and he did not like the pressures of being a pop star, and so he decided he wanted to still be a musician, but he wanted to take some time, so he actually took six years before making anything else. He went to hippie communes, he traveled, he basically retreated from the public eye until 1978, when he puts out a record called A Via Lactea, which is another fantastic record I'll talk about another day. This is a very interesting record, and in many ways it bears the marks of having been something which was rushed out, because it's just a single disc, but there are 15 tracks on here. There's only one song, I think, which is over three minutes. A lot are sub two minutes, some are sub one minute. So there is almost inescapably a bit of a snippety feel to it, and yet the overall effect is very cohesive. The first track is Você Fica Melhor Assim, which is a very funky track. It sounds to me a lot actually like Lou Reed. There's a whole bunch of different influences you can actually hear on here. Some people say they can hear Miles Davis. I'm not sure about that, but I can definitely hear Lou Reed on this first track. It's really catchy and beautifully produced, which is true all the way through this record. Cancel Postal has a whole chorus of guitars. I mentioned there were 13 musicians on here. Very nice effect. And then this vocal chorus as well, which sings a series of kind of haunting descending lines. For its part, O Casador, the third track, has almost a soul jazz feel. It's very groovy, but the vocals are this kind of distant, high-pitched sound, which are very much in contrast with the funky feel of the track. The next track, O Mem de Rua, exploits pretty much the same contrast. And then Now Foynada, the fifth track, is much like a lot of Clube da Esquina, very clearly a Beatles influence song. Pensive Ose is like a little soundscape of ringing bells and tinkling harpsichord. Fio de Navalha is back to the funky rock feel of some of the earlier tracks. It's a good track, but a little bit underdeveloped, and as I mentioned earlier, that's kind of a problem with some of the tracks in this record. The final track inside one, Pra Onde Vai Você, think of For You Blue from Let It Be, only the Brazilian version. It's great, but it's very snippety. It's only 38 seconds long. Side 2 starts with Calibre, which is some very pleasing jazz funk. It's only a minute and a half. It's got some great flute from Danilo Caimi. The next track, Faça Se a Jogo, is a nice little song, but kind of underdeveloped. But the rest of Side 2 is where this album really lifts off, because the last five tracks are just excellent. This may be true because these are also amongst the longest songs in the record, and therefore there's a chance for a bit more song structure to emerge. This is exemplified by Now Se Apague Esta Noite, which is a very cool song. It's got some great Hammond organ, really well structured. A.S. Baroas is super funky. It's got this great piano and bass rhythm, and it gets even better when the electric piano jumps in. Como O Machado has got some great, great guitar work by Lowe with a vocal to match. I mentioned that this is an ethereal album, and there's no better example of that than Eo So Como Você A, second last track, which has this beautiful, shimmering guitar. It's just a lovely, lovely track. The final track, Todo Es Agua, is an instrumental based on a really cool riff. You could be picky and say it doesn't really develop, but the riff is really cool. This record is full of musical ideas, many of them brilliant, but they're not always worked out into fuller musical structures, and so sometimes all you're really left with is a riff, but the riffs are pretty cool. Thus, it's snippety, as you might expect from a record with a running time of, I think, less than 25 minutes, with 15 songs on it. But it also has some major, major strengths. Powerful rhythms that draw both from Western pop and from Brazilian music, and this sense of melancholy, the same sense which pervaded Clube da Esquina, which really comes from this sense of turmoil that all these artists were feeling under this extremely repressive environment of the dictatorship. It's imperfect, but it's fascinating, and it's an indelible part of Brazil's musical history. For me, it's four and a half out of five stars.